Hello, this is Tom Lombardo, director of the Center for Future Consciousness, and this is Science Fiction, The Mythology of the Future, Part 2. The Golden Age, 1938 to 1950, space operas, aliens, dystopias, and future histories. Included on this slide to begin with are two more Frank Paul's fantastical images of alien worlds. The Golden Age was instigated, ignited, created by John Campbell in astounding science fiction during the period 1938 to 1950. Within astounding science fiction, various famous short stories and novellas appeared, many of which evolved into novels. Included during this period were many new, noteworthy writers that came on the scene, cultivated by Campbell. Included here are some famous covers from that period, including The Shadow Out of Time by H.P. Lovecraft and With Folded Hands by John Williamson, the fantastically interesting, psychologically so, uh, story by uh, Henry Kuttner and C.L. Moore, the husband and wife team of science fiction of the Golden Age, Private Eye, The Mule by Isaac Asimov that eventually developed into the Foundation Trilogy, Slan by A.E. Vaught, and uh, The Grey Lensman by Doc Smith, and Aesop, which became the beginnings of City by Clifford Simak, and Black Destroyer, also by Van Vocht, which, is a, which was a precursor and inspiration for the movie Alien. Classics of Science Fiction and the Golden Age. The Science Fiction Hall of Fame, a three-volume set, contains short stories and novellas voted as the best science fiction stories by the Science Fiction Writers of America, covering the period mostly of 1934 to 1964. Within these three volumes can be found stories by Fritz Lieber, Doc Smith, Court Weiner Smith, Frederick Pohl, Jack Vance, Henry Kuttner and C.L. Moore, Ray Bradbury, uh, Theodore Sturgeon, and uh, Clifford Simak. This is an excellent resource for looking at the great stories that emerged during the, during the Golden Age in particular. Two of the most famous and influential science fiction writers to emerge during the Golden Age were Isaac Asimov and Robert Heinlein. They were involved in predicting future histories, creating images of future wars, the development of the idea of robots, space and time travel, and cosmology. Isaac Asimov, who wrote between the 1930s and 1990s, was a prolific writer of both fiction and nonfiction science. He covered a comprehensive scope of topics in both his fiction and nonfiction stories. The Foundation Trilogy, which is a very famous and well-known trilogy written by him, involved predicting and controlling the future of human civilization. The Last Question, which is my favorite story by Isaac Asimov, is a cosmic science fiction story about the birth of the universe. The End of Eternity is a superb time travel story. Nightfall was voted as the best science fiction short story included in the Science Fiction Hall of Fame, and I, Robot, which was one of Asimov's many stories about robotics uh, in which he formulated together with uh, John Campbell his three laws of robotics as safeguards regarding the development of artificial intelligence. Heinlein wrote from the 1930s to the 1980s. Included up on the screen are uh, covers from some of his best known science fiction works, including Universe, which is one of the best science fiction novellas written during the Golden Age, Stranger in a Strange Land, which was the scientific novel, science fiction uh, novel for the hippie culture, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, which won best novel of the year, by his bootstraps, which is one of the best time travel stories ever written, and Starship Troopers, which is military science fiction. Heinlein won five Hugo Awards for best novel of the year during his 50-year period of writing. His novels often contained a social political dimension, and from beginning in 1939, he wrote an intricate future history through a series of stories and novels.
What Orwell feared were those who would ban books. What Huxley feared was that there would be no reason to ban a book, for there would be no one who wanted to read one. Orwell feared we would become a captive culture. Huxley feared we would become a trivial culture, preoccupied with some equivalent of the feelies, the orgy-porgy, and the centrifugal bumble puppy, from Amusing Ourselves to Death by Neil Postman. Postman here is talking about two of the great dystopian novels written during the 1930s and 40s by Orwell and by Huxley, uh, 1984, and Brave New World. Dystopias, Brave New World, 1984, and We. It was a bright cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13, which is how 1984 begins. These three novels, Brave New World, 1984, and We, cover a world of no pleasure, a world of no pain, and a world of no soul or I. All three were written outside of mainstream science fiction, but in fact all three are great classics of science fiction. Brave New World involves a loss of depth and intelligence in human culture, a culture that is hierarchically controlled from the top down, a culture, a humanity that is engaged in triviality, that is engaged in sensationalistic, hedonistic, pleasure-seeking existence, a world controlled through biological and genetic engineering and manipulation. 1984 is a totalitarian nightmare, its big brother controlling and watching us. It is the ultimate paranoid trip in which history and truth are distorted to serve the state. Finally, We, which was written in 1921, is a powerful depiction of the human mind of the future. It is a world of transparency, of mathematics and order. It is such an interesting a vision of a human mind different from our minds today that it is unclear or ambiguous whether in fact this is a dystopian or utopian vision of the future and of the three we to me seems to be psychologically and and from a literary point of view the most powerful the silver age 1950 to 1965 we saw the emergence and popularization of the inexpensive paperback novel, a new proliferation of science fiction magazines beyond astounding, and a wave of popular new science fiction movies. The Hugo and Nebula Awards. The Hugo Awards, named after Hugo Gernsback, began in 1953 and were voted on by the World Science Fiction Convention members. Uh, they were voted on regarding the best fantasy and science fiction in novellas, novels, novelettes, short stories, films, and new writers. The first winner of Best Novel of the Year was The Demolished Man by Alfred Bester, an incredible psychological trip. The Nebula Awards began in 1965 and were voted on by the science fiction and fantasy writers of America involving similar categories to the Yugos. And the first winner in 1965 was the classic science fiction novel Dune by Frank Herbert. Movies, Catastrophes, Monsters, and Invasions In the 1950s and 1960s, there was a fear of the bomb, of the atomic war, of the end of human civilization. There was the space race. And in science fiction, both in the movies in particular, but also in literature, we find a mixture of horror together with uh, ideas about developments in technology and space travel. Two of the greatest science fiction novels ever written were produced during the Silver Age. A Canticle for Leibowitz by Walter Miller and Earth Abides by George Stewart. These are tales of the future after the fall of human civilization. They are humanistic. They are tragic. They are incredibly moving. And in the case of A Canticle for Leibowitz, uh, the novel is both comical and ultimately very religious in its themes. Science fiction movies during the period included 
Earth versus the flying saucers, an invasion of the body snatchers. Notice the similarity in imagery of aliens invading the Earth. Fear and horror. But we also saw in the movies When Worlds Collide by George Pal involving the destruction of the Earth, an incredibly interesting uh, movie during that period with great special effects. We saw The Thing from Another World, which was loosely based on John Campbell's Who Goes There. And perhaps the best science fiction movie of the 1950s was Forbidden Planet, based on Shakespeare's The Tempest, with great visions of the, an alien world and advanced alien civilization. It is a story of realizing absolute power within the mind and it backfiring on us again. During the Silver Age, we saw some great science fiction novels regarding human evolution and transformation, including Flowers for Algernon, which was made into the movie Charlie, The Demolished Man, which I've already mentioned, and More Than Human by Theodore Sturgeon, involving the concept of a homo gestalt. We also saw great stories about space travel, astroengineering, and alien minds, including The Martian Chronicles, and Solaris, and toward the end of the period, the incredibly imaginative Ring World by Larry Niven. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, even into the 70s and 80s, one of the most popular science fiction writers was Arthur C. Clarke, who combined together science, myth, and evolution in his incredible stories about the future, and in particular, the future of humanity. He synthesized elements of religion, of myth, of the promise of future human evolution, of highly evolved aliens, coupled together with solid science and technological extrapolation. Childhood's End, which was written back in the 1950s, explains myth in terms of premonition. Among uh, Clark's best works were The Nine Billion Names of God, 2001, The Star, The City in the Stars, Childhood's End, The Fountains of Paradise, and the incredibly imaginative Rendezvous with Rama. The New Culture and the New Wave, Psyche, Society, Ethics, Gender, Sex, Religion, and the Taboo, 1965 to 1980. If Jules Verne could have really looked into the future, say 1966 AD, he would have crapped in his pants. And 2166, oh my, Philip Jose Farmer from Writers of the Purple Wage. Beginning in the mid-1960s, science fiction began to challenge the cultural norms of contemporary society as a reflection of the countercultural movement which was emerging during the same period. We saw a further revolution in writing literacy and an increased emphasis on social psychological themes. The visions involved in new wave writing were often bleak and pessimistic regarding the future. Included within uh, the incredible variety of uh, works produced during this period are The Death Bird, which is a retelling of Genesis, Dangerous Visions, of famous anthology of innovative stories which contain farmers, writers of the Purple Wage, and I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream by Harlan Ellison. Besides Writers of the Purple Wage, There is Flesh and Two Your Scattered Bodies Go by Philip Jose Farmer, Farmer being someone in particular who introduced sex into science fiction, The Female Man by Joanna Russ, which introduces issues of gender in science fiction, The Drowned World, The Wind from Nowhere, The Crystal World, The Terminal Beach, and The Atrocity Exhibition by J.G. Ballard regarding world catastrophes and loss of faith in modern humans society, Lord of Life by Roger Zelazny, The Book of Skulls by Robert Silverberg, and finally Behold the Man by Michael Moorcock. Moorcock was one of the central instigating figures in the new wave, and Behold the Man is a time travel story of a man who goes in search of the truth of resurrection, and through time looping actually becomes Christ, forming an extremely interesting metaphysical interpretation of the nature of God based on the concept of traveling through time. Philip K. Dick, Reality, Madness, and Mind. 
The Man in the High Castle, which won the Hugo Award for Best Science Fiction Novel of the Year, involved an alternative history where Germany and Japan won World War II and the United States and the Allies lost it. This novel is where Dick acquired significant worldwide or at least national recognition and was probably his best novel. But Dick wrote an incredible number of science fiction novels through the 1950s into the 1960s and 70s. He wrote Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which became the foundation for Blade Runner. He wrote We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, which became the foundation for the movie Total Recall, and other classic science fiction novels like Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said, and The Three Stigmata of Palma Eldridge. Dick questioned the nature of reality. He questioned the meaning of sanity and realism within the human mind. Throughout most of his life, he was poor, struggling to make a living as a science fiction writer, and he became increasingly obsessed with hearing voices and communications from some higher or different reality. His stories have been greatly popularized in contemporary science fiction movies, Blade Runner and Minority Report being two of the best science fiction movies made in the last couple decades based on stories by Philip K. Dick. The most significant development, though, to occur during the new wave was the emergence of women as science fiction writers. Within science fiction history, we do find Catherine Moore, who writing in the 1940s and into the 1950s, was a very popular and influential and accomplished feminine uh, woman writer. But she was an exception. There were not very many science fiction writers who were women. But beginning, beginning during the late 1960s, we find a proliferation of extremely popular and extremely competent and uh, science fiction writers who are women. We begin with Ursula Le Guin. Ursula Le Guin in the late 60s, early 70s wrote two of the best science fiction novels ever written that won both the Hugo and Nebula Awards for Best Novel of the Year, The Left Hand of Darkness and The Dispossessed. The writing level, the psychological, cultural, and social insight of these two books clearly puts them in the top 10, 20, or 30 books ever written, best science fiction novels ever written. Women of Science Fiction, James Tiptree Jr. This is James Tiptree Jr. as a young woman. This is James Tiptree Jr. as a mature writer of science fiction. James Tiptree Jr. was the mystery man of science fiction in the late 1960s, no one ever having met Tiptree. Many people thought Tiptree was either a CIA or an FBI agent. When Tiptree published The Women Men Don't See, soon thereafter Tiptree announced that she was actually Ellis Sheldon, and Tiptree was a pseudonym she took from a marmalade jar. James Tiptree Jr. or Alice Sheldon in the late 1960s and through the 1970s wrote many of the most popular science fiction stories of that period, including The Girl Who Was Plugged In, Her Smoke Rose Up Forever, and Love is the Plan, The Plan is Death, which is a graphic, poetic, psychologically insightful story of alien love, which I consider to be one of the best short stories written within science fiction in the last uh, uh, 30, 40 years. And finally, Star Songs of an Old Primate, a collection of her stories that and seem to have reference to herself, of course, as being the old primate and her stories being star songs. And that brings us to the end of uh, part two on James Tiptree, who was really a trip.